All right, so I have these different captures of the emoji I made in that, that site. I'm going to just use my screenshot because it gives me a little bit of space to work with. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open that up in Photopea. So if we were using Photoshop, I could right click and say open with Photoshop. But if we're using freeware, we want to go to the site first. And then we can say either open from computer where I can navigate to it. That's why it's nice to have folders. Oh, we need to pick a color. So what color do you guys like other than red and purple? Yellow, everyone good with yellow? We'll have Laker colors for my two sections. All right. So I find it and then I find exercise two and then I pick my screenshot, right? And then I can open it. That works. The other way, which Photopea has added, which is nice, is I can just find mine and then drag it here and it will open up. Now, remember the first thing we did when we started our last exercise is we had to create an artboard that was the resolution size we wanted. Even though we're going to be creating these with vectors and vectors don't have a resolution, we still want to make our print size the right resolution because vectors can't be printed without resolution. So vectors are perfectly scalable in any resolution until they're made real in the world. And when they're made real in the world, some resolution has to be selected, right? What's nice is the same vector file can output something that covers a building or covers a business card. So for this, we're going to take that raster image, that pixel based image from our screen which looks really distorted, right? And we're going to turn it into perfect clean shapes. But to do that, first we're going to change the canvas size first. So you're going to go to image and then canvas size. And we're going to make it a perfect square. Okay. Because your screen grab might be something off. And if you did it from the PNG that you downloaded, it will be a perfect square, but it will be too closely cropped. So here, let's make it 500 pixels. We'll do pixels here, 500 by 500. And you'll see that it's going to grow our artboard on each side. So canvas size is when you want to grow the paper or the canvas or the artboard. Image size is when, when you want to change the resolution and the dimensions. Next, I'm going to go to image, image size. And we're going to make that not pixels, but we're going to make it inches. And we want it to be 8 by 8 inches. And then we want our resolution to be what? Same as the last project? 350. Yes, 50 above uh, standard minimum print resolution. And we want resample to be checked. It's already checked. That's going to what's called upsample. So as bad as those pixels looked all stair-stepped, now they're going to look really, really fuzzy and wavy. So the problem with raster images is when you upsample them, when you force them to be bigger, it will create more pixels, but this is how it creates them. Along what were clean vector edges, it creates these ripples of extra pixels that are like moderating. It's like taking a a wet paintbrush and like dissolving the ink everywhere. So this is bad. Clients aren't happy when this happens to their artwork, right? To their assets, to their logos, to their type. So that's why vectors are so, such a valuable tool to learn. We're going to replace this, make it what we want, not by editing the pixels like we did for the last project. Like if I wanted to make the monkey uh, like a black cat instead of this brown, I might select those pixels and I would like fill them with with black. That's how you would edit pixels. And that's changing pixel upon pixel. But look how messy that gets when you were at a bad resolution. So instead, we're going to use new tools. And we're going to go to the bottom of the toolbar, where before we were using the top of the toolbar, and this is where the vector tools exist. And really, the only vector tool we need to use for this project, is because we're getting used to it, is what's called the vector shape bar. Vector shapes, if you 
Click on it and hold. You'll see the drawer. You have rectangles. You have ellipses. You have param parametric shapes, which are any kind of like triangles on up. And then you have custom shapes. Custom shapes, if you click on that, you will see the shape options here in the tool options. And you actually have quite a few very helpful copyright free or license free um, vector shapes that you could use that might help. But you're not going to have anything that's exactly right. So what we want to learn is how to customize our own vector shapes. So we're not going to use the pen tool, though we will when we do actual vector design. We're not going to use the line tool. We're going to use only these shapes. So the rectangle, the ellipse, the parametric, and the custom. And I'm going to start with the ellipse. Notice I didn't make a new layer because the tool is going to do that for me. So I'm going to try to do the circle that kind of fills the bottom of the jaw. So I'm going to just click and drag. And it will make a big oval for me. And then I'm going to use the move tool to move it where I want it. And then if I want to alter it, we're going to go to Edit, Free Transform. And just like we were doing with our pixels, we can hold down Shift and we can squish it, we can scale it, we can right click it, we can play with different ways of creating these shapes, right, and customize them. Just like cutting out shapes from pieces of construction paper. Now, how do we choose the color for the shape? We it creates its own custom shape layer. So we want all of our shapes to stay vector shapes. And we know that because it will have that little anchored square in the corner of the, the layer window. Kind of like a smart object, but different than a smart object. It means we can't erase from it, just like a smart object. We have to keep it a vector shape. But we can still edit it by going to Edit Free Transform. How do we change color? We double click on the shape, on the layer icon of the shape. And we can use the color selector, but whenever the color selector shows up in Photo P or Photoshop, there's also this nice handy attribute where it can copy a color that's already open in Photoshop. So you can match a color. I want my cat's color, so I'm going to pick kind of a, a dark brownish black. Okay, now I have to layer shapes on top of that, just like you did when you made the emoji. That gets tough right away because this shape is blocking it. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to select our background layer, and then we're going to hit Command-J to duplicate. Gives us an exact copy. Then we're going to move that layer up to the top, and we're going to play with opacity, and we're going to take it down to like 25%. This is called onion skinning. It's like making tracing paper and putting it above everything we do. So it's a guide for us. And then for the first time, we're going to use the padlock so that we can't accidentally mess up that layer. So now, if I wanted to add the, the top part of the head, I go back to the shape tools. I'll use the ellipse. just with all its default settings, and I can move it into place, and then I can use my Edit Free Transform to shape it a little bit, hold down Shift. It can be helpful to start by matching what you have until you get the confidence to make your own shapes and make it what you want. And then, of course, I want to move that shape underneath my guidelines, right? And then anytime I want to see what I have, I just use the eyeball to turn it off. Now for each vector shape, it's going to look like there's an outline around it. That's just showing you it's a vector shape. That's the path. But as soon as you click onto another layer, that path will go away. So if you ever want to see what you have, you just turn off your guide layer and you'll see what you have. So this is filled in with solid black. If I want to match that, it's very similar. But I'll just go double click and then click on the color I used before and say OK. Now for the eyes, it's always going to put a shape 
above the layer you have selected. So if I go to the shape tool again and I'm going to make the whites of the eye, for instance, and I might make it a little bit more oblong, and then I'm going to change its color to white. And then I can use edit, free transform, shrink it down. I can make it holding down shift into a bit more of an oval. And then I can rotate it and tilt it. Make it kind of a custom shape. My cat is a tuxedo cat, so he has kind of this white banded. Actually, he doesn't. Never mind. <laughs> he has a white stripe above his nose, but not around his eyes. All right. So I'm going to go to... Edit, free transform. I keep trying to use the control T shortcut. And it has to be shift control T, but browsers overload that. So, and it opens a type tool. Yeah, it's not worth it. So just go to the edit transform to get to it. Don't try to use the shortcut unless you find it works for you. So if I do that, I hit return, I get that shape. Now, if I want a duplicate of that shape, what can I do instead of having to draw it all over again? Command J. Awesome. You guys are listening. Now, if I want to flip that shape over to here, what can I do? I can do edit, free transform, right click, flip horizontally, and then just move it over. It will show me kind of a center line. And if I hold down shift, it will kind of help it stay lined up. Then you hit return. And what do I have so far? I have this. <laughs> Very freakish. So next, the nose. So now this is where it gets a little bit more interesting. I'll start with an ellipse. You know, I'm kind of put the nose where I want and I'll pick a color. Because I can always change these colors later. And I'm going to move it up above like construction paper, right? And now when I do edit free transform, I can do a little bit more interesting than just rotate it or squeeze it. I can right click and I can warp it. And maybe I just tug this bottom edge. And then I can get more of these customized shapes. This is a, a rounded wedge. And then I could do it again. So you're going to get a lot of practice free transforming. And I can play with scaling it, squishing it, placing it where I think it should go. I like it to overlap the eyes a little bit. Uh, maybe be a little bit lower. Be about there. All right, now what about the pupils? So I use the ellipse. Remember, it's always going to add a shape on top of the last shape you did. And I'm going to make my cat's eyes just a little bit oblong. And I'm going to make them yellow. Not lime green, but yellow. Maybe a little bit pale or yellow. And then I can duplicate that, Command J, and then I can just move that duplicate over on top. So those guides really help. So this is what I have so far. And it looks a little like a hate crime, but it's going to get better. Against monkeys, against cats, against all kinds of things. But it's just shapes. And we get to play with them. So... I think the ears are going to help a lot to make it look less monkey-ish and more cat-like. So let's learn some of these other tools besides the ellipse, though it is my favorite. Let's use the parametric. And we want a polygon, but we only want three sides. And we'll get a triangle. So then I can move that triangle where I think a cat's ear might be, and I can even soften that triangle a little bit with free transform and warp, and I can kind of curve it out in different ways. 
So this is really going to help you get used to the transform 